maybe the best pilot episode of Star Trek ever? Let's take a look. My name's Al and as always this is the Geek In Review and I'm going to be taking a closer look and a breakdown of Star Trek Prodigy Episode 1 Lost and Found. So if you haven't seen the video don't watch anything but it has been on for a few days now and if you don't want any spoilers I have done a sort of reaction video or initial thoughts and much. I don't go into too much detail on that so definitely check that out first if you haven't seen the episode. Now first of all, what an intro that was with the sort of zooming out and then finding out you're in the mine in the prison and the animation grabs you straight away. It's unlike anything that I've seen with regards to Star Trek. It's very different from Lower Decks which of course is exactly what we were all expecting but I didn't know how different it was going to be being a kid show that's on the Nickelodeon channel. Now this initial episode or the set up for the season I should say is on a prison colony and what's interesting is the universal translators have been confiscated so none of the prisoners unless they're your own species or they know your language you can't communicate with them so it does make escaping very hard. Now there aren't any real easter eggs in this but there is quite a lot of nods to other Star Trek properties. Being set in a prison it is very similar to the undiscovered country where Kirk and McCoy get sent to the Klingon penal colony. There's a bit where he's in a lift going down to the mine shaft and it's almost exactly the same as the scene in Undiscovered Country where Kirk and McCoy are getting ready to escape. Now I did say this in my initial video and I'm probably going to say it more than once so if you don't agree with me, hey, that's perfectly fine. But man, this world does feel very Star Wars-y, especially with all the droids flying around. Dal's plotting his escape from this prison, it looks as if this isn't going to be the first time that he's tried it. But Dal's escape isn't the only thing going on in the penal colony. What seems to be the main villain, or at least from the first episode, played by John Noble, if you know him from Fringe, just called the Diviner. Now, again with the Star Wars thing, this guy's sort of base of operations looks exactly like Vader's castle. Uh, in Rogue One and the fact that he's in a VAT tank as well is heavily reminding me of Vader. Daughter Gwyn, played by Ella Purnell, who I'd only seen in Army of the Dead and to be honest I thought that she was American until I heard her speak in interviews for that. I was quite shocked to find out that she was British. But she seems to have a bit of a relationship with Dal and the Diviner is very interested in him for some reason. There's a great mystery around Dal and his species. No one seems to know where he comes from. And because he's not met any of his other species on the planet, he's sort of on his own, but him and Gwen, the Diviner's daughter, seem to have a bit of familiarity. I don't think they knew each other before they were on the prison planet by the sounds of it, but you never know. But one thing that's constant throughout this show, and I just want to talk about it while I'm kind of near the start, is the music. Now there's so much music, it's almost in every scene, and it is so epic and bombastic, and it's just, it, it's so cinematic of course, because it's done by Michael Giacomo, who's a very famous composer. He's done loads of films and loads of TV shows, but my god, this feels like it should be in a J.J. Abrams Star Trek film, that's how grand it is. Now, while we don't get a lot of answers to what's going on in Prodigy, I'll get to that in a moment, we do get some familiar faces or some familiar races in the form of the Kazon first of all. We get a Kazon bounty hunter showing up looking to deposit a child onto the prison. And it's good to see the Kazon back but we don't get any information about what they're up to. Again, we might get this in the future. But other than Dal trying to escape, the Diviner's main problem is a fugitive from the prison called Fugitive Zero, which isn't exactly the most exciting name, I think it was the same name that they used for a villain in Matt Smith's first episode of Doctor Who. If you want to know if I'm right or not, Google it because I can't be bothered. The Diviners also got a henchman called Dreadnought who, again, mentioned the Star Wars looks exactly like General Grievous and a lot of people have been saying that online. I've even seen a few jokes about Disney suing Paramount over this. And I can kind of see why the animation does feel very Clone Wars if you ever watched that show in the later episodes. I would advise you have because it's on Disney Plus if you've got it, check it out, it's a good show and it does add to a lot of backstory that's probably going to come into the Book of Boba Fett and stuff like that. But anyway, back to Star Trek. So Dal gets a sort of offer to help define Fugitive Zero and he's not really being too cooperative so he gets locked in a cell in a prison already. He's on a prison planet, what's the point of putting him in a cell? But hey man, it's the plot. And whoever's next door is at least familiar with him because he can speak or they can speak his language so he thinks it might be someone that's met a member of his species or maybe is a member of his species. We find out that Zero is a magician who's been one of the oldest, well not one of the oldest, but going back 
a race that's been mentioned in Star Trek, but we haven't actually seen them for years. For good reason, it'd be very hard to put them on screen because they're sort of gaseous energy life form. Kind of similar to the Vorlons if you're a Babylon 5 fan. Hal is given a day to help locate and track down Fugitive Zero. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, he has to go deep into the mine. So for safety, the miners get chained up to each other. And he is chained to this huge rock looking monster who, if you've seen any of the promotions for this, you know is Rock Talk. And you think that Rock Talk is going to be this sort of aggressive beast, but there's a twist later on that I totally forgot about because I avoided a lot of the promotion for this show. While Rock Talk and Dal are looking for Fugitive Zero, they come across, I would say maybe the star of the show, the NX Proto Star. And remember, it's the NX, not the USS, because that seems to indicate that there's some sort of variant or it might be a prototype starship that the Federation or Starfleet are using. I say this in pretty much every Prodigy video, or the very few that have done at least, if you want to check them out, go and do that, is linked to that line that Harry Kim had in the episode Omega, where he says that Janeway, or he thinks that Janeway is going to detonate a torpedo into some sort of Type 6 protostar to create an artificial wormhole. Because how else is this ship going to get to the Delta Quadrant? We don't get a lot of answers in the first episode. We just get them sort of discovering the ship and the formation of the characters. But the ship doesn't look like it's been used for a while. It does look like it's been there for quite a few years. Now we don't know exactly when this is set. So it does raise a few questions such as how did it get there? Why is the Diviner looking for it? And more importantly, what happened to the crew? We know that Robert Beltran's coming back already, so I think that Chakotay, or Captain Chakotay, probably was in charge of this ship, and he's going to show up somewhere in the Delta Quadrant. But once they get inside the ship, they activate the ship's systems, turning on the translator, and they find out, as I'd totally forgotten, that Rock Talk is actually a little girl, and this completely blew my mind. I knew that it had been mentioned before, but I'd been avoiding a lot of the promotion for this uh, show, I hadn't really watched any of the trailers, uh, so I thought it was absolutely fantastic and it was a great little touch. I think that Rock Talk is probably going to be one of the best characters in the show. They also meet Zero who explains how the Medusan thing works with the containment suit and that the Diviner has been using her as a weapon, or him as a weapon. They don't, I suppose they're sexless, so I'll just say him. The Diviner has been using them as a weapon, looking for the Protostar. So again, He's putting a lot of effort into finding this ship, so why does he want it? Was the whole colony built around the fact of finding this ship? Or, you know, it does raise a lot, a lot of questions. But they realise that they need numbers to crew the ship in order to escape from the planet. So they go and recruit Jank and Pog, played by Jason Manzukis. Now, I've seen Jason Manzukis in a lot of things on TV, like The League in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but he does do a hell of a lot of voiceover work and animated work. Uh, there's a show that he does on Netflix, he does Invincible as well. So to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to him in this. I thought he was just going to be doing the same old shtick, but I'm glad to say that I was wrong, and Jank and Pog looks like he's going to be one of the more funner characters. He's got a very sort of Yoda way of speaking, and he talks about himself in the third person. He's an engineer, a Tellerite, so he's very argumentative. And the fact that the others know that he's a Tellerite, and they're an Alpha Quadrant species in the Delta Quadrant. Again, this does raise a lot of questions. His Pog doesn't really seem, or Jankin Pog, doesn't really seem to acknowledge that it's a Starfleet or a Federation ship. So maybe he's never seen one before. Pog tells Dal that he needs at least a week to repair the damn ship. And they do make the little joke about engineers exaggerating about the time frame, but Dal has got less than 24 hours, or at least how long a day is on this planet, to get a resolution and solve his problem and hand over Fugitive Zero. Now, while all this is going on, the Diviner finds out that what they're up to and where the protostar is, and the bit where they escape is a really long, huge scene, but the animation is fantastic. I was actually gutted that I couldn't put it in my last video. I enjoyed looking at it so much, but I didn't want to spoil the episode for anyone that hadn't seen it. But as soon as I looked at this, I thought, I want to see this on a cinema screen. I don't want to see this on a TV. I hope they do make a movie out of this. Nickelodeon does have a good habit of turning its TV shows into films historically. Whether this would work, they're going to have to wait and see what the audience numbers were like. Going back to the Star Wars thing, when Dreadnought shows up for the fight, it did feel a lot like General Grievous versus Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith. The show had me sort of, I was so immersed in this and so immersed in the adventure and what was going on, I forgot that we were going to see Janeway or were expecting Janeway. I kept thinking that she was going to pop up 
because you'd pop into my head occasionally in the last five minutes that's all I was thinking about I thought we weren't going to get her and then she does a Luke Skywalker at the end of The Force Awakens and she's just in it for I think about 15 seconds what's interesting is she refers to herself as the Janeway hologram not Captain or Admiral Janeway and I think we're going to find out that there's more holograms on the ship or it might have the capacity to have more holograms and it would be a fun thing to introduce old TNG Voyager and maybe even DS9 characters in that form because one thing that Lord X keeps hinting at that it hasn't really touched yet is Deep Space Nine and for some reason these other Star Trek shows seem to be afraid to mention it. Discovery hasn't touched any lore or anything to do with Deep Space Nine. But anyway that's just my little rant. Now, as I said, although for the Star Wars comparisons, I absolutely love this show. I can't wait to see what they're going to do and the adventures they're going to take us on. Because we still don't know anything yet about the history of the Protostar, why the Diviners are looking for it, or what is just generally going on in the Delta Quadrant and where these guys are. But what did you think of this show? Let me know in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Twitter at The Geeks Reviews. My name's Al. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, please leave a like and a subscribe to the channel. It would mean so much.